Oh, it's inspiring. Hi, Jake. L M N O P. Q R. Check, check, check. Hello, hello, hello. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. A Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Oh, what you choose? Transgressions, wandering in sin. I went searching for redemption down a road that had no end. I was walking through the fire. I was living on the run with my flesh lost in desire. I was drowning in. <laughs> Yeah. Fourth every time. Okay, is my mic? Okay. Welcome, Bethany Bobcats! Woo! And welcome to all our parents who came to join us this chapel. Yes, so, welcome, okay. parents. We're so excited you're here. And it's my pleasure today to 
um, introduce to those of you who do not know Avery. Avery Patterson is our seventh grade student council rep. And these excellent middle school leaders have agreed to do announcements at chapel and they've organized themselves under Katie Lane's direction and I have a list for the rest of chapel who's doing announcements. That's how good they are. So Avery, take it away. So since we exceeded our booster thon goal, Miss Hunter is going to turn into an ice cream sundae. Woo! Do I do I say that? Now for our sports announcements, elementary boys basketball won their game. Congratulations, guys. And the elementary girls won their soccer game. Good job, everybody. Woo! And for grandparents day for kindergarten through fifth grade, the doors open at eight o'clock. The, be the concert begins at nine. Valet parking will be available. So, yeah. And I have um, an award for the Green Choice Champion, Pre-K-3. Um, okay. For, um, please come up to the stage, Charlie Ward, congratulations. You are the Green Choice Champion of Miss Lashbrook's class. Congratulations, Charlie. High five. <laughs> Here, do I? Can you go back? Okay. <clears throat> and then, if you do not have a place you call home, we have Rio Vista Community Church Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock in person and online. So. Dan Dean Avery, good job, thank you. Okay. Bye, you do it so well, awesome. And now we will welcome um, Miss G up, or Miss B up, or, oh, Mrs. Hunter, like it's now, it's <laughs> on. Here comes Woo! an ice cream sundae. <laughs> Yeah, girl. All right. I'm excited. My job, I get to put the rainbow sprinkles on Mrs. Hunter Day. What are you putting on her? Oh, she gets to do the cherry on top. And Miss, we all get to do some whipped cream. Should we, should we go all in, guys? I think we're gonna we're gonna go all in. We're gonna make Miss Hunter the best ice cream sundae. Wait, ready? You guys need to count us in. Ready? And then we'll start going. <laughs> ready? One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> I gotta get her feet. We're getting her feet. <laughs> Getting those knees. We're coming behind here. Woo! <laughs> I think mine's already gone. <laughs> looking good, looking good. How's she looking? Woo! Chocolate syrup. Woo! Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Everyone, you guys gotta go. Ice cream sundae. 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 Oh, we'll come all the way up here. That's right. Woo! Oh, this is the best part. Okay, should we just dump it? What do you guys? We're just gonna dump it. Woo! Good. Oh. The chair. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> All right, Miss Hunter, you are such a trooper. We. <laughs> 
Okay, this is actually pretty magical. <laughs> oh my goodness, let's give her a hand, you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, there is a literal trail of whipped cream and sprinkles going out the door. How many of you guys think she should just stay like that all day? Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's give it up for Mr. Mickey who has to clean all this up. <laughs> hey, thank you, Mr. Mickey. All right, friends, that was a good time. We got to do that fun thing because you guys raised so much money for our school. So thank you, Bethany Christian Bobcats. Woo! All right, so we are going to get started with our worship time. I am going to invite up Miss G, and she has a couple of friends who are going to lead us in the doxology as we prepare our hearts to give glory to God and to receive from him a good news today. So everybody, could you please stand up? Yes, so we have a couple of friends, Kira Ridgeway and Daphne Frawley from Ms. Bowman's fourth grade class. They're going to lead us. So everyone, we're going to sing this song all together, and we're going to put our hands out in a posture of praise. Shh, let's get down to a zero. Oh, they sing this beautiful song to worship. There you go, girls. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Girls, that was beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Remember, friends, if you want to share your gift with us and glorify the Lord through the leading of the doxology, let Miss G know. We always have spots open. We'd love to have you. All right. We've got our worship team on the stage. Don't slip on a rainbow sprinkle. <laughs> Because we are gonna, we are gonna worship God. You guys can move down this way. All right, our first song, parents. A couple of weeks ago, we got to enjoy Spiritual Emphasis Week here at Bethany Christian School, and we learned five new songs. Today, we're gonna show you our new one of them. So it's called "See the Light," and you guys have to get this move ready. We're gonna go up and down on both sides. So I think you guys are ready. Are our parents ready? Yeah, we're so excited to have you guys back. Here we go. Let's see the light. Down. 
Other side. Put your hands up. All of this for you. That's why we're here. We're here for his glory. All of this for your glory. Then we come down. All of this for your glory. All of this for your glory. Sing it to him. For I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see. Ready? One, two, three, four. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now we move up, <laughs> down. Woo! Now sing it out, all for His glory. All. All for him. It's not about us. It's all for him. All of this for your glory. Last time. Oh, all of this for your glory. Woo. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, friends, we have one more song for you. This is a little bit of an oldie. We're digging back. This song is called We Are Yours. You belong to the Lord. When you ask him into your heart, you are a child of God. You are his forever. So let's sing about that good news today. Here we go. Yes. I know I'm trying to like play the clap. <laughs> You placed eternity in our hearts. You placed eternity in our heart. We were yours from the very start. All we've known has been torn apart. And now we have forever. Do a little stomping. You gave a song for our souls to sing. And your life was the offering Even death it has lost its sting And now we are forever You can't take it away And you can't take away What the world didn't give We were meant for more We were meant for more At the end of the day This will remain Forever we are yours Forever we Put your hands together. You made a place at your table, God. Paved the way for the poor and lost. Called us into your open arms. And now we have forever. You can't take it away. And you can't take away. We were made for more. We were made for more. Forever we are yours, and you can't take away. We will miss more. We will miss more at the end of the day. This will remain. Forever we are yours. Forever we are yours. No one, no one, no one can take your place. No life. Your love Whoop. has conquered the grave. And you can't 
take away what the world didn't give. We were made for more. We were made for more at the end of the day. This will remain forever. We are yours. One more time, sing it out. And you can't take away what the world didn't give. We were made for more. We were made for more at the end of the day. Forever we are yours. Forever we are yours. Forever we are yours. Forever we are yours. Thank you, Lord. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Take a seat, friends. We're going to pray together, and then I'm going to introduce our speaker for the day. It is such a blessing to be all together again, to have our parents here. God just loves when we raise our voices all together for him. All right, let's put our hands out, and we're going to count to three and talk to our great God. One, two, three. Heavenly Father, we come to you so grateful that we are yours, that we belong to you, and that nothing can take that away from us. Thank you, God, that your great love sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins so that we might experience the hope and the joy and the peace um, that you only you can provide here on earth. And I pray, Lord, that all of us would shine brightly in this dark world, that we would um, go out and make a difference for your kingdom and that your name would be lifted high here and that people would experience your great love through us. That is our desire. We pray for today's chapel and our speaker today as we learn more about the topic of perseverance. God, teach us and train our hearts to persevere well in a way that glorifies you. Thank you so much for the example of Jesus who persevered above of all. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll give it up for our worship team. So thankful for our middle school girls, Miss G. What a blessing. All right, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker today. He has not one, not two, not three, but four kids here at Bethany Christian School. Isn't that crazy awesome? And he is a local pastor um, and just an incredible man. And we are so blessed to have his wisdom sharing about perseverance today. Can you guys give it up for Pastor Mr. Kalionen? Thank, Thank you. you, Julie. All right, good morning. How are you doing? Under the lights. It's always so bright under the lights. Well, in my house, I don't know if this happens at your house do any of your dads tighten things really tight? Yeah, that happens. I do the same thing, especially if I want to keep it for myself, right? So the soda bottles, I turn it past the thread. It's on there really hard. And then in my house, I don't know if you like pickles. Well, some people are like, oh, pickles. Other people are like, yay, pickles. We're, my family, we're a yay pickle family. And so we're always kind of fighting over pickles. And same thing with the jar, right? Really tight on the lid. And so in my house, if you want to have a cup of soda or if you want to have a pickle, you have to, you've been talking about perseverance, right? You have to persevere. You have to try really hard sometimes or find something even to help you to get something like that open. And uh, that sounds kind of silly, maybe, but that's what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about perseverance. And as we begin... Um, let me pray, and then I want to share a scripture with you, a Bible verse, or a few of them, and, uh, and then talk to you briefly about perseverance. God, I pray that you would help all of us, myself, uh, the students in here, the youngest student to the oldest student, uh, God, even that you would be uh, speaking from your word to parents and faculty and staff, uh, God, that we might become people who persevere, persevere in school, persevere in our careers, in our families, but we also persevere in faith, Jesus, and you. Help us to do this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, this is the first set of verses I want to share with you about perseverance. And it says this, so do not throw away your confidence. Can you, you can't see behind me. Can you see me now? Can you see now? 
Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. And then behind our ice cream stuff, it says, in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. So Jesus is coming back. And, and in this letter, in this writing, the author is talking to a group of people, and they're kind of being challenged or tempted to, to stop following Jesus. And, uh, and, and that's a real challenge that all of us in this life face as well. We all come to Jesus maybe at different times in our lives, and maybe you come to Jesus when you're younger, and you haven't really faced a lot of adversity or hard things in life yet. And sometimes when people start facing difficulty in life, they start to ask questions about God and about his Jesus, his son, and, uh, and those questions can lead them to have doubts. And then some people walk away from Jesus and say, I don't, I don't know if I believe in Jesus anymore. And the author, the one writing this letter, was, was talking to people who were challenged with the same thing because they were being persecuted. Do you know what that word means? They were being hurt, injured because of their faith in Jesus. And some were even being invited to, to turn away from kind of this new faith they've discovered and turn back to kind of their old ways and their old faith. And so the challenge for the audience, those getting this letter, is to persevere. And now i got a picture up here, the first one, of a young girl running. When I was in... When I was in uh, eighth grade, I finally got up the courage to try out for school sport. I played baseball my whole life growing up, but I was a little intimidated about going and trying out for the school team. And I finally got the courage to try out in uh, eighth grade for the boys baseball team at my middle school. And, uh, and I was doing well in tryouts and it came down to the last day of tryouts and they already had cut initial people. And it came down to me and one other guy. His name was Ivo DeFranceschi. I remember his name. Ivo DeFranceschi and me. Ivo also in high school, by the way, he was a, an Abercrombie Fitch door model, but that's something else entirely. <laughs> Maybe parents, you know what that's about. And so um, Ivo was the, he was a thorn in my side. Well, Ivo actually got the last spot on the baseball team and I was cut. And I was so discouraged. I, I kind of wanted to just quit altogether sports. I was so, I felt, I felt like a loser. I didn't feel like a winner, right? I was cut from the baseball team. And uh, I went to see my uh, science teacher, Mr. Todd. And Mr. Todd was encouraging me. And he said, Dylan, how about this? You thought you were going to play baseball. How about you join the track team? And I said, that sounds horrible. I'm not fast for short distance, and the, the idea of running for a long distance, that does not sound very fun. But what I did is I joined the track team, and I actually ran the mile. And so every day during track season, we would run one warm-up mile, and then a three-mile loop around the neighborhood, and then one cool-down mile. So five miles a day, we started running so we can condition ourselves. And it was hard. Have any of you run long distance before? No, maybe. If you've ever run a long way for a long time, you know it's so hard. It is so hard. And what I had to learn during that time in my life, running track, running the mile, is I had to learn perseverance. I had to learn to stick with it. And perseverance usually involves a couple things. It usually involves uh, difficulty, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, long run. And so perseverance usually involves difficulty, right? There's some kind of challenge and then some kind of delay, right? You're not getting the reward for what you're seeking after for a while, perhaps. And uh, I find that running is kind of like that. But not just in this. There's other pictures in life that help us to get this picture. Um, and I got one more picture up here for you. Do you know what these are? I'm not, I'm not a, like a geologist really, but I think most of these are agates. They're types of like, uh, we'll call them rocks, right? 
Can you see that behind me here? Boop. Agates. What's that? What does it look like on the left? On this, on this side. They're really rough, right? And they have sharp edges and they're rough. How about on the other side? On this side, the right side? They're really smooth and shiny, right? And so we're talking about perseverance. And perseverance is sometimes sticking with something through difficulty. And then sometimes for a long time. What's the benefit in life, in school? School can be long. It can be hard, especially the second half of the school year feels long, not as many breaks. And what's the benefit with sticking with it? What do you get at the end of the school year if you stick with it? What was that? You get a summer break. That's fantastic. Yes, you get a summer break. Well, you get to graduate to the next grade, right? You get to graduate to the next grade. You've learned some things. Persevering, it shapes you. And so this is like a picture, I think, in our life as we seek to persevere, whether that's in school or that's in sports, but also in our faith. God has a way of shaping our life and forming us and making us into something more beautiful, something that reflects his character. And now no one likes to do hard things and no one likes to have to endure through difficulty. But in this life, we will have to do that. We will be called to persevere. And when you persevere when you're younger, through little challenges, as you get older and you start to have bigger challenges, you've been kind of working those muscles. And so you're able in a lot of ways to continue to persevere through new adversities. And really, when it comes to faith in Jesus, like I said, it can be really hard because sometimes we have to face some real difficult things that we would have never thought we would have had to face. And so I know last week you talked about perseverance. We're talking a little bit more about it. And so perseverance, it involves, right, some kind of difficulty. And then oftentimes there's a delay. You don't get the prize or the reward maybe which you're fighting for, you're running for, or you're heading towards, right? But we continue to persevere, racing, running for the prize, right? Running for the prize. And as I said, these, um, these people who received this letter uh, of the, for, to the Hebrews, they were being challenged, right? Would they continue to follow Jesus through the difficulty through the adversity, or would they turn away from Jesus? And that's, that's a serious thing. That's a big thing because at the end of the day, Jesus is the one who comforts us and who is with us in our adversity, but also is promising us that one day when he comes again, he is going to take us out of adversity, all the difficulty, all the pain. And so the promise that he's given us is a good promise. And so we want to continue to hold on to Jesus, which leads us to another set of verses in Hebrews a couple chapters later. And it says this, right? And so this is the encouragement for you as you think about life and persevering, but also keeping faith, continuing to trust in Jesus. It says this, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. And so that what it's saying is Jesus ran before us. Jesus ran a race and he ran it before us and he kind of shows us the path. But then it goes on. It says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And so the question is, how do we persevere? How do we continue to run through this life of faith and do it well, continuing to follow Jesus and endure? Well, Hebrew says, don't just try to give all the effort you can. It says to, to give your attention to something. It says to remember Jesus. As you run this race of faith, remember Jesus. And, and how, how does that motivate us? Well, we remember that Jesus, he ran a race for us. Jesus ran a race for us. And the race he ran for us, he had to suffer. He suffered for us. 
And then after suffering, God raised him, and now he's seated at the right hand of God. And so now we're invited to trust and follow Jesus as we run our own race. But as we do, remember that Jesus ran for you. And when you remember that, when you remember that Jesus ran a race that we couldn't even run for ourselves, but he had to win that race for us, he, he gave his life for us. When we remember that, right, that gives us a new kind of courage. That gives us a new kind of, kind of energy and uh, to, to run the race ourselves, remembering what Jesus did for us. And so I know all of you have your own challenges in school, in family, in sports, and in life. And so but Jesus is inviting us to continue to follow him, to follow him in this race of faith, to not turn away from him, but continue to seek to do God's will, to persevere in doing God's will in this life. And as we do, we want to remember Jesus and how he gave his life for us and how he ran for us. And that gives us the confidence and the courage to continue to run this race And the ultimate promise is this, as we continue to run after Jesus, not because of how we run or not because of the work we do, but because of him, as we continue to put our faith and trust in him, the promise is at the end of this race, at the end of the race of life, we will be rewarded. He will give us life with him forever. And that is the best reward we could possibly ever get in this race that we're running. And so I hope today you learned a little bit about perseverance. Perseverance sometimes, again, it can be hard and difficult. And then sometimes we have to persevere because the reward we're waiting for is a little ways off. But in the process, God is shaping us, right? Like those stones we saw. He's shaping our lives and he's forming us into people he wants us to be. And in a way, we kind of begin to look a little bit more beautiful. We begin to look a little more like Jesus, And then as we continue to follow Jesus, we know that the ultimate goal one day is to be with him forever. And when we see him, the Bible says, we will be like him. God will complete the work in us that he began, and he's going to make our lives look like Jesus. And we will be able to kind of shine with Jesus forever in his good kingdom. Is that good news? Uh, amen. Amen. I hope it's good news for you this morning. And if, you, if you're going through anything hard in this life, I encourage you not to try to run yourself. Talk to your mom or dad. Talk to a trusted parent or teacher here at the school. And uh, don't try to do it on your own. If you have questions or doubts, if things are hard, we run this race together. And we encourage each other to continue to keep faith in Jesus as we run. All right? All right, let me pray for us, and then we're going to dismiss. God, we thank you for chapel today. I thank you for all of these young students, these young people. They were so well-behaved this this morning, God. I pray that you would continue to give them the ability to grow and mature and that they would be able to persevere. And as they go through the hard things of life, God, I pray that you would be with them and that they would know that you're with them. And that they would remember you, Jesus, so they can face the challenges that they have in their life as you face the challenges for us in yours. So we just thank you for your word, God. We thank you for this time. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, students, hang tight right where you're at. You guys are going to be dismissed by class or row. And again, it's my privilege. Thank you for having me this morning.